Hi there, I'm Amelia from Wheelhouse, and today we're going to be moving on to step number two of onboarding, which is inputting your minimum stays. This should be pretty quick and simple, especially because in the last video we input your tags, which is going to allow you to group and sort your portfolio in the most efficient way possible. So here, once again, we're looking at the initial wheelhouse dashboard, and I'm going to navigate us over to the portfolio settings view. So we're going to talk through some of the most efficient ways to approach the minimum stays, ways to avoid any kind of repetitive actions. And with these steps, you'll be able to quickly knock out these minimum stays in just a few minutes. So here you can see the helpful tags that we put in last time. So when approaching these minimum stays, try to think of it in the largest group of properties that have the same minimum stay. Um, and then go ahead and filter by that group, either with tags, maybe it's by a number of bedrooms, which you can also see down here, or market, et cetera. And then we can go ahead and select all. So now that I have all of these selected, when I come over here to the minimum stay edit button, I'm going to be making an adjustment to all of these properties, and they'll show up here in this column. So think of it as any properties that have the same settings, we're going to want to put those together so that you don't have to do it twice. Um, but if that does happen, we also have a copy and paste tool, which I'll show you um, so that either you can do that for existing properties or as your portfolio grows, you can simply copy that minimum stay strategy over. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this edit button here under minimum stays. And first, we're just going to talk through each of these different ways that you can um, adjust the minimum stays. And this is going to save you a lot of time throughout the year because you can set these all up ahead of time. That's the time investment. And then you'll know that we are following your gap night rules and date specific rules throughout the year without you having to do it in real time as the calendar year goes on. So first we're looking at this global minimum stay setting. And let's say that that is two across the board. So it's basically saying wherever we don't have any other adjustments or specifications in these settings, two nights is going to fill in. So even if it's over a year out and you don't have any rules in place, the two night stay is going to remain. Next, we are looking at gap nights. So say you have two two night bookings with like a one night stay in between. Some operators uh, don't want to fill it, but if you do, then you can very easily turn on this gap night rule here. And then maybe it would allow for just a one night stay. Or if you had a three night global, you could allow for a two night, or yeah, two night stay. You can even choose how closely to a stay date you want to allow that or how far away. And in, uh, once we're done with these, I will show you how we can even price these gaps differently. So you can either put on a discount or a premium so that throughout the calendar year, whenever you have those awkward one night stays between um, bookings, then we will automatically identify those and price them appropriately. Next is day week rules. So maybe if someone's coming in on a, a Thursday, you want them to stay throughout the whole weekend. So for that instance, I would put three nights there. And then you, you know, maybe you just want to fill up weekday nights. So you could just put a one night stay there in there, whatever works best for your strategy. And all of these are optional. So you could totally leave day of week rules um, empty and just allow for two night stays to fill in there. But you're only going to put specifications where it's something other than two nights. Next, we'll go into monthly rules here. And this is a great start for more seasonal strategies. So maybe your high season is July, June, July, and August. And for weekends, you're really trying to book all of those up. So you can do that here. And then maybe across Christmas, it's the same. So if they're coming in um, during your holiday season on a Friday, you want them to stay three nights also. And you can do this for as many groups of months as you'd like. There's a little trash button over here as well. So feel free to pause the video and input your seasonal minimum stay settings here. Once you come back, we'll be looking here at time-based rules. So time-based rules are a great way to avoid um, tedious work throughout the year. So we have two options here. We have within and also after. So say um, a booking is an, an available night is open two weeks out. Then maybe it'll allow for that to drop down to a one night stay. But maybe if they're booking in your high season, 
over six months out, so after 180 days, then you're going to bump that minimum up to four nights just to protect your calendar and make sure you're not missing out on revenue there. So if you're going to have something on the books that long, you might as well make it worth your while with a bit of an extra stay. And this, uh, again, is just a good way to protect the calendar so that if you haven't thought of a certain date range further out and someone tries to go book it way ahead of time, then this is a good safeguard to have in place. Next, we have one-sided gap rules. So you can choose if you want those gaps to fall before or after um, an available, uh, before or after a booking. And then lastly, we have date specific rules. So you could input these for Christmas or you know any kind of set event where you'd want to increase that minimum stay. You can choose that date range here. And you can also set it to repeat annually. So you don't have to come in next year and redo that. And how these rules work is they're all going to override each other. So you have your global rule up here that will fall in wherever you don't have a further specification. But these gap nights are going to overrule the global. Day week is going to overrule everything above it. Monthly rules and so on. So it kind of works as a hierarchy. So with these date specific rules, this can act as a hard rule. No matter what happens, I want it to be you know a five night minimum stay. Or you can choose for us to allow for those time-based rules or gap night rules to override this as well. So just take some time to kind of think about throughout the year, start with your seasonal settings and put those first and then think about your most important dates. And maybe you have across your portfolio, all of them will have different rules for the same date ranges, but different uh, lengths of stay then what you could do is put an arbitrary number in here that's gonna catch your attention, but you know you need to adjust. And then you can input these date ranges across all properties, and then just go on the individual level and adjust the value. And that will avoid you having to redo the, the date settings on each one of them. So you can just put the dates on each of them and then go in and adjust the values. So before we wrap up here, I'm going to show you how we can price those gap nights differently as well. That's a good step to follow up uh, the minimum stays. I'll go in here and edit the gaps. We always have data-driven recommendations. So you could do like a slight decrease for those gap nights, no decrease or significant decrease. Or some operators want to pull a premium. So some operators... I uh, want to uh, optimize your occupancy for those gaps and just get the rooms filled so they'll do a decrease. Others will put on a premium if it's not worth it to have a shorter stay. Um, so if you're going to have a shorter stay, might as well have a premium. And you can choose what day of the week you want to allow for those gaps to fall on. And then you can set the minimum allowed. So we'll say one there. And then maybe you want a 15% decrease. Or you could do a 20% increase. So either way, whether you want to do a premium or a discount, you can do that here for those gaps and we'll automatically fill them throughout the year. So let us know if you have any questions. Uh, once you do this for one group, you'll just uh, clear that selection, choose the other tags for the other group of setting, uh, other group of properties, and then do the same thing for those. And as I mentioned, uh, we do have the copy and paste tool. So if you forgot to include a, a property in that strategy, no worries. You would just select that property. Come down here to copy settings. I'm just going to copy over the minimum stay strategy here. Hit next. Select the properties you want to paste it onto. Next and apply settings. So in just a few steps, you can copy a whole uh, minimum stay strategy. You can also do that with minimum price strategy, et cetera. Um, but that should make it pretty simple. So let us know if you need any assistance. Again, if something's taking you a lot longer than you anticipated, let us know. And there's always a more efficient way to do it. And we're happy to help. So thank you so much for your time. We look forward to hearing from you. And I will see you in the next video.